Hi everyone, welcome to Self Image 2022. My name is Amanda Ong and I'm 27 years old this year. So this year I tried to keep up with a lot of TikTok trends for myself as well as New Recording 47. At some point I was trying to do one TikTok a day on my own account. I was doing that with Jason Yu and just to see who could get 10,000 followers first. Spoiler alert, I did it but he has also caught up to me now and I realised that that is just too taxing to do. I was really getting into the groove of thinking of ideas and creating the videos on a daily basis so it was fine when it was happening but I think once I got the 10k followers I lost the motivation to continue doing that and I also felt like it was quite stressful to keep thinking of ideas. I had a lot of content to post during the wedding because that is an easy idea factory but after that not so much so I decided to just stop and now I just post whenever I feel like it which is not very often at all. I'm still going for personal therapy as well as couples therapy now and the biggest thing I learned in therapy this year I'm not sure if I learned it last year but I've tried to embody more of it this year um, it is the trying to change myself instead of changing others in the past when I felt someone was wrong I felt like it was my job to tell them what was right so that they could see the way now I realize that the way is just my way they could have other ways of doing it instead of being hung up on trying to change somebody that doesn't want to change or someone who just has a different opinion from you maybe it's better to just change your mindset instead so that you don't have so many negative feelings about it i've also read 31 books this year read or listened to audiobooks i guess and i like listening to audiobooks because i use one less scent it's like i can walk to the bus stop and listen to it and instead of reading and knocking into something else but yeah, so most of the books I've read, maybe half of them are probably from Julia Quinn who is the author of Bridgerton and I've just been reading the rest of her romance novels because sometimes I just need to escape from life. But yes, I hope to continue this next year as well. I also wanted to release less songs this year because I was really churning out, I think, either six or seven songs last year along with an EP and I felt like it was very tiring and I didn't want to keep doing all this promotion because the, the ROI was quite low and I wanted to focus on bigger things for my life instead like me recording 47 because I enjoy performing with them a lot more than performing myself even though I do enjoy writing songs by myself so I just didn't want writing songs to become a burden to me and I realised even though I tried slowing down I released 5 songs this year so I guess it's not really a burden to me to release songs so I'll just continue doing it anyway. Yeah, I do have a few songs in the pipeline for 2023. I haven't started producing them yet and there's no fixed date that I want to release them, which is the different thing that I'm doing this year. In the past, I would have planned out releases for two years in the future. It's also probably because I had a lot of backlog and now I just have less backlog. So we'll just see the songs when they're done. On 1st February this year, I got promoted from Digital Growth Executive to Marketing Project Manager. Woo! My boss Ruben was noticing that I like to clean up the spreadsheets and dashboards a lot and I like to move the deadlines for people to finish their tasks on time if they can't handle it and then he realised that that is stuff that a project manager does so he asked me if I wanted to try the role and I was very intrigued because I didn't know that all these small things were an actual job on its own so I'm really thankful that I have a boss that can look out for these things for me is willing to nurture me and even send me for Coursera things so that I can learn more about this role because I'm so new to it and I've indeed learned so much it is so much more than just cleaning up spreadsheets and shit my favourite part of the job is the cleaning up of spreadsheets and dashboard I think the hardest part would be to liaise with everyone else in the company that I need to liaise with. Maybe it's because I'm new to the role, I, I will probably get better at it in the years to come. So maybe it's just hard for now, but it's a challenge I'm willing to explore. I also tried working from another country for the first time. I went to Melbourne in May. It was initially to escape wedding planning, but it was also nice that I could work from there and it didn't take up my annual leave days because once again, my boss is amazing. He prioritizes work done instead of like hours work. So as long as the work is done, I can work from anywhere I want. I also felt like my friends in Melbourne were kind of moving on with their lives and I wasn't really missed. But the moment I was there, I did feel that my presence was missed a lot. So 
I do want to go back more often if I can. Unfortunately, not any time in 2022 left because I've thought about it in the shower, trying to work out my schedule and the longest time I can go for is two days so I don't think it's worth a seven hour flight each way. So I'll wait until next year to go to Melbourne. I also did ICL in me. ICL is implantable contact lenses so right now I have perfect eyesight again. I can see everything, I don't need to use glasses anymore, I don't have any contact lens cases or solution or lenses, I don't have to bring all those overseas, I think it's so much of a convenience. It was expensive but only the best for my eyes and I think the younger you do it, the more years you have to enjoy it. That's how I saw it, so I felt like it was going to be a worth it investment. Another thing I learned from my brother's girlfriend Amber is that you don't actually spoil your eyes if you read in the dark. She told me it's more about the distance you have your device. Even like holding my phone up here would be too close. If you sit far away from the TV would be best. That's why you need to take breaks so that your eyesight doesn't worsen. So you learn something new every day. I got married on 19th June and it was a lot of stress. I was stressing out for an extremely long time over too many things. But overall, when I look at the bigger picture, I remember the good moments such as having full length Mindy on my arms, my back and my legs. That was the favourite thing I did. And also that I managed to perform the song I wrote for my vows. I didn't cry in the middle of singing it. I was a little pitchy but I didn't cry. And I almost made Ahmed cry. I do wish that my friends from Melbourne, especially Grace, Sarah and Wilson could come to the wedding. But it's alright, we have two friends. And that's the most important. It's a lot better than inviting people to your wedding and then you don't actually stay friends with those people after that. So I prefer having them as friends compared to having them at my wedding. After the wedding, I think there was a it was a COVID cluster, so there were about 40 people who got COVID. I was just in a house with my brother and his girlfriend who both have COVID. Right before I came home, I was in a hotel room with Ahmed for two days before he also got COVID. So I have no idea how I did not. Get COVID. Guess when I got COVID? I got it on the honeymoon. And here is the 41 second song to listen to. I felt a scratchy throat for maybe two days. I thought I just wasn't drinking enough water, but I drank a lot the next two days and it was still there. So jokingly, I decided to test myself for COVID because I wasn't having a fever or any other symptoms. I didn't think it could be it. But the moment I saw the two red lines, I was just looking at it like this. And then I'm it from the other corner of the room. He was like, you're joking, right? Since we were in New Zealand, it was a very sparsely populated country. And we also rented a car. So most of the time, I just stayed in the car and then we just drove to places so I could look out of the car. And if the tourist spot didn't have any people around it, I could maybe go out with a mask and a scarf and like many, many layers over my face so barely any germs would get out. So I would just look at it. I wouldn't open my mouth when I got out of the car. I would just look at things and then maybe go back into the car. So that is how I was trying to be safe and at the same time enjoy my honeymoon. I got to attend four weddings this year. I was invited to six but unfortunately had to turn two down. I went for Isaac's wedding, Kelly's wedding, Benedict's wedding and JJ's wedding. JJ's wedding was at the same place as mine so it's interesting that I got to attend it as a guest instead. I've also accomplished a goal that I didn't know was going to be a goal this year. I hosted my very first live event um, for the Aka Meet and Eat. It's for the Singapore a cappella community and it came about because I was just trying to form a telegram group so that we could pass each other gigs because when I decline a gig due to lack of availability, I don't really know who to pass it to and I feel like it's just a wasted gig if no other a cappella group takes it. So I wanted to create a group to share those gigs with. And that group just happened to like friends, added friends and all that and it became more than 200 people. In that group, Peter from Michael reached out to me and he was like, when are you hosting an event? And I was like, I didn't think I would have to do that. But I felt like I was in that position now and I would like to take it because if I didn't take it, maybe someone else would take it or the Telegram group might just fail. I would much rather be in a position where I get to bring people in the community together rather than just be a bystander. I recorded the rest of this before this milestone, but I also got a tattoo! Look at it! I've already been getting some stupid jokes, like if I press the stop button, will you shut up? Those kind of rude things, but it's okay. I like it. It's a line that goes around my whole arm, 
and then just music player icons. Yeah. I've also finally reached the highest level of my pole class syllabus at PhD Pole Studio. It took me just over four years since I started in September 2018. And it's because we had to start and stop so many times during circuit breaker. I still feel like I am the worst in class, but I'm the worst in a very good class, so it makes me feel a little bit better. I'm in Zeus. I'm just very happy to be here, and I'm very proud of myself. So, first of all, I want children. I would like a child to spawn a little me, and I hope it happens sometime next year. I would also like to host more Singapore a cappella events, and I'm looking to apply for a NAC grant so that I can produce a Singapore a cappella compilation EP. I also thought of a card game idea for arranging wedding seating in the midst of my stressful wedding planning. And I think it's currently an okay idea. I would like to bring it to life. I think that would be a great way for me to earn some passive income. I also want to find an opportunity for a new recording to perform overseas. Perform or just attend a festival or something. And this is my room. This is the view from my room. These are my favorite clothes. This is my husband. This is my mom. This is my dad. This is my brother. These are the people who know me best on a daily basis. This is me in 2022.